Uh, good afternoon and uh, happy new year. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Jane Irrigation Training Series. Uh, today's segment is on uh, the new water management services that are being offered by Jane. Uh, this is a really exciting time, I think, in technology and water management. And I think about, well, uh, this is an interesting service to uh, offer. Uh, for me, I think it is uh, really an opportunity for growers to learn about Jane Logic software, uh, how to use it, how to sit side by side with an expert who really understands it and learn from them. You know, I, I think about when I first started using like an Excel spreadsheet, I thought, man, if I could have somebody from Microsoft or Bill Gates sit down next to me and teach me how to use this, uh, the learning curve would be so much faster. And so uh, when I think of water management services, the opportunity to learn, to work with is one way to do it. And the other way is just to turn it over to Jane and let them do it. Uh, so there's two, two ways uh, that it can be done. And uh, so I thought this was really important. And uh, I wanted to bring Jeff Tool on today to uh, explain all of this to us. And, and the reason why, you know, J uh, Jeff's the uh, executive vice president uh, for Jane Distribution. And he's uh, the, the leader, uh, the thought leader for our technology products in ag out of uh, Fresno, California. Jeff's been involved in irrigation uh, and particularly ag irrigation for the last 17 years. I was on the Irrigation Association's Board of Directors with Jeff uh, before we worked together. And uh, I got to tell you, you know, Jeff's really an expert in this area. And uh, I'm really glad to have uh, Jeff on our team uh, and your team uh, customers uh, who are able to uh, utilize his talents because uh, when it comes to uh, being an expert in technology uh, for irrigation, Jeff is definitely one. So Jeff, welcome. And uh, where are you? Uh, where are you today? It looks like you're out in the field working. I'm in. Uh, I'm in. I'm in Wasco. I'm out of the field. So I, I've noticed that since we started talking, it's uh, there are two crows. There's one <laughs> on a purple tank sitting, oh, probably 25 yards in front of me, and then there's one on the power pole up behind me and the two of them are kind of squawking at each other so if you hear the crows uh, trying to compete i'll uh, i'll try to talk as loud as i can so yep, yeah the field yeah so well uh, great uh, it's great that uh, you're doing this uh, we can't hear the crows a little but it's uh, it's no big deal we can hear you just fine so jeff i'm really curious uh and would like you to take us through you know this uh, idea of jane offering water management services what what caused this why why did you decide to do this well, you know, Richard, it's uh, from a big picture perspective, uh, the answer is pretty simple. It's, it's water, you know, or I should probably say it's it's increasing scarcity and, uh, and the cost of water. When you throw in Sigma and similar regulations in other states to reduce uh, groundwater extraction to sustainable levels, um, it gives you a pretty compelling motivation to help growers uh, do all they can to, to better manage water resources they have available. So, you know, it's, it's water costs and impending regulations. And, and I would say there's a second why, and that answer is pretty simple as well, and it's education. We, um, we know there's a better way to irrigate using technology. Uh, one, of our, one of our biggest industry hurdles is effectively educating growers on, on how to use the technology to improve their irrigation practices. Uh, the, the tools exist but there's a lot of confusion and misinformation and there's hardware software companies out there that just, just want to sell another system and move on. And we really, we really want to work hand in hand with growers on applying the technology to make their decision making better, uh, frankly, better, quicker and easier. Yeah. I think that's so uh, valuable, Jeff. And when I think about it, you know, oftentimes, uh, we think of water managers or people think of water managers as maybe, you know, some, uh, some mystics, you know, somehow they know when to water and when it's right and for how long, but it's really actually just science, right? It's some calculations and, uh, and having the right technology that to measure and do those calculations. So, you know, where, where, where do you ultimately see this going now? You know, it's uh I had this conversation uh, a couple a couple of days right when we first came back, and it, it's interesting. It came up again yesterday uh, when I was talking to a grower, and the more people I talk to, the more I see this headed towards something like the CCA, PCA, so Certified Crop Advisors and Pest Control Advisors. 
Um, I think we'll see water management advisors or a WMA down the road sometime. We have, today in the industry, we have certified irrigation designers and certified ag irrigation specialists. And Gene, uh, by the way, Gene has more on staff uh, than any other manufacturer in the industry. And the CAIS or the certified irrigation, ag irrigation specialist is probably the closest we have today from an education uh, standpoint or certification standpoint, but but frankly, we could place more emphasis on the scheduling side and uh, an irrigation optimization using the technologies that are available. And it's just, it's a, it's a thought on what may come to pass given the increased pressure to, to use less water. Yeah, that's really interesting and um, and fascinating because it is becoming so uh, important now uh, as each day goes by. Um, you know, I'm wondering though, Jeff, uh, what what water management services are, are offered by Jane today? I mean, is it like a bronze, silver, gold package, or how does this work? Well, we're we're only offering one one level of service. That's not a bad idea, maybe uh, to to break it down, but. Today we're offering one level, and I'd really like to think that it's a, a gold level of service. Um, the service is based on weekly reporting and, and personal interactions with the grower. Um, you know, to go through the details, I, I know, you know, to get into the specifics of the water management services, it's going to take me a couple minutes. So if, if you're, if you're good with taking a couple minutes, I'll, I'll, to the best I can, I'll run through what we're gonna what we're gonna offer. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that people want to hear these details, right? I think this is the really important part. So yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So it's all it's all premised around weekly reports. Uh, Jane will will provide several reports once per week uh, during the growing season. Uh, the reports will be emailed directly to the grower and made available through Jane Logic, um, which is a soft, the software that we, we use and, and the growers will have access to that software. The timing of the reports on that weekly basis will work again, hand in hand with the grower to try to match up with his or her weekly planning and scheduling practices. So, you know, if, if for example, a grower typically puts out their um, schedules on, you know, Monday, we'll make sure they have the information um, as best we can on Monday, get it in their hands on Sunday, you know, different growers do different things. So we'll work with them um, on timing. The reports, I'll, I'll get into a few of the specific things that we'll provide. The first one being crop water consumption. And some of this we went through uh, briefly in the last webinar, but I'll, I'll run through it again here quickly. Um, and, and it should go fast just because we don't have a lot of imagery and so forth. So, um, Crop water consumption, or ETC, it's it's a, a numerical value of inches of water consumed in the field, as reported by AgriLogix satellite and remote sensing models. Hmm. So, we're getting that data from from AgriLogix and the remote sensing, the value represents an estimation of the water consumed in the field through plant transpiration and field evaporation. Um, Related to that, the next piece of information uh, the growers will receive um, is ETC field uniformity. And in that case, there's two components that are reported. There's an image depicting the ETC uniformity of the field using uh, colorized pixels of 10 meters by 10 meters. And the color of each pixel represents the ETC value and the variation of colors across the field indicates the uniformity. And the, uni the uniformity value is also provided as a percentage between zero and 100, where 100 would be considered perfect uniformity. I've never seen that. And a value of zero would indicate no uniformity. And I've never seen that. And we typically like to see uniformities in the plus, plus 90 um, range. The next, uh, the next piece of information, and I apologize, I have a semi going by making a delivery to the, uh, to the storehouse over here. So pardon the interruption. Um, the next piece of information that we'll provide is, is crop vigor. And vigor reporting uses the satellite-based uh, NDVI. Um, and we provide images and values uh, for the fields. An image uh, is, it's, it's 
very similar to the to the density. It's provided using colorized pixels, again, in 10, 10 meter by 10 meters. And the color of each pixel indicates the vigor value on a scale of zero to one, where one is the highest possible vigor and zero indicates no vigor. And again, I've never seen a one or a zero. So, um, you know, we're looking for values and, and that that does vary through the phenological you know, process that's there. Um, the next report is the Hyperview. Um, it's the Hyperview crop vigor uniformity. Again, two components are reported. It's an image depicting the vigor where the scaling is, is it's zoomed in and recolorized uh, to show greater details of vigor variation within the field. And a vigor uniformity value is also provided as a number between zero and 100, where 100 is perfect uniformity and much like uh, the other zero would indicate no uniformity. Um, the next, next piece of information is the vigor difference images. This is, these are really, really important, very useful, um, especially when you're looking for changes in the field, that's what's most important. So two images are provided in this case uh, with alert conditions. There's a one week vigor change image that shows areas within the field where the vigor value has changed positively and negatively by more than 10% since the last week's report. So that's your one week. Uh, the values are given for this, um, for the number of acres and uh, as a percent of the acres that have positively and negatively changed since the last week's report. And then there is a second image that goes along with this that's the four week vigor change. And in the same manner as the one week vigor change report, um, it, it, it compares the current week to values from four weeks ago as opposed to just one week. So, and, so Jeff, I, I have a yeah, quick question here. Absolutely. Um, so those, um, some of those things, I don't really understand what they are. Sure. So if, do you just supply these to me or do I, uh, do I get a guide of, of what to do after this? Or do you interpret it or does somebody on your team interpret it? What, what's that look like? So in this case with the service, normally normal gene logic users would be receiving this information and be able to extract it directly out of gene logic. But in this case with the water management services we will actually be interpreting it, um, personally having a conversation, going through these reports with the grower, um, helping to identify and explain all of this as we go. So it's really, it's a really personalized, it's, it's like a consulting service. So you're not just gonna get the data thrown your way, you're, you're actually gonna get you know, personal interpretation uh, from, from one of our experts. That's awesome. That's that's really what I need, right? I'm not afraid to ask for help. Absolutely. And uh, if I can get an expert to help me on the water, this is what I need. So does that sure. include like uh, irrigation schedule too? Absolutely. So that would be, that's actually the next item. Um, one of the things that we provide is the, the weekly irrigation schedule. Um, it's a recommended daily irrigation schedule for the coming week including uh, recommended run times on a daily basis uh, of the irrigation system. And <clears throat> the recommended schedule is, it's, it's based on a number of parameters, including the prior week's crop water consumption, the ETC, which you've, you know, we, we provide, the soil moisture conditions, what's going on in the soil, projected soil infiltration rates. So we're looking at how the water's moving through the soil using the soil moisture probe and, and anticipating that. And then the irrigation system application rates as well as the forecasted weather. So there's a lot going into creating that, uh, that schedule. And just so you know that we're, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and what's happening in the field, some of the reporting that you'll get would be a water infiltration report, which is basically it's a chart that we provide that depicts the water infiltration depth and rate over time. Um, and we do that for both irrigation and precipitation events. We show the duration. So the duration of the event, say it's a, an irrigation event that ran for 24 hours. We would show the max depth, 
how far into the soil the, the irrigation uh, reached down to the bottom of the soil moisture probe, the time to depth, so how long it took to reach each, each of the depths. And then from that, you can determine the rate, which would be inches per hour. So you can look at the, the rate of infiltration um, as, as well. The uh, one of the other reports that we do again, so that you know exactly what's coming in, coming out and how we're performing, would be the weekly performance report, and that would be a report showing the recommended weekly irrigation schedule um, versus the actual water applied. So, in this case, the grower—it's always up to the grower. Um, they will always know better than we are. Uh, we, we're trying to provide a, a tool and provide recommendations. So we'll, we will track the applied water um, that is run by the grower against what our recommendations are so that the grower can see, you know, how well that uh, they're performing. And um, in addition to that, we would also provide a year to date uh, performance summary, which is it's a report that shows the actual it's the cumulative water applied by the grower versus the cumulative crop water consumption so that etc value it's probably one of the most valuable of the reports to really track throughout the season how well you're applying your water versus the water that's being I'll just say drank by the trees or consumed by the trees and evaporated um, from the soils then of course there'll always be some miscellaneous reports. There's so much we can do with Gene Logic, and if there are some specific objectives the grower has, we can always provide you know additional reports. That's really an amazing amount of information, right? That's everything I could possibly think of that I would need to know uh, how much to water and how frequently. Um, it's pretty uh, pretty great, right? And uh, uh, a ton of information. But how does this service work after you get this information? Do you guys actually come out? Do you send one of your team members out to turn on valves or do you actually manage that part of the water? No, I, we, we, uh, we won't be turning on any, any valves or coming into the field unless, unless, of course, the grower wants to go more towards an automation route uh, where we'd be happy to turn their valves on and off but we wouldn't be going into the field to do it. We'd be using some automation to do it. So, um, but to answer your question, you know, the implementation of the service is really, it's really pretty straightforward. There's, there's an agreement to be signed uh, that defines what both parties uh, responsibilities are during the service. There's a field assessment and then there's an installation. And during the field assessment, you know, Gene will evaluate uh, the field with the grower to figure out exactly what hardware is required to achieve, you know, what the what the grower wants to achieve, his his objectives. Now, if there are any additional hardware required to, to meet any specific needs or objectives that the grower has that are outside of the program's normal scope, then we would have to we would charge for that. Um, it's it's an example of this would be we have a lot of uh, vineyard. Um, growers that might ask for under canopy temperature and humidity sensors to, to detect um, powdery mold conditions, or perhaps it's a it's a flow meter monitoring um, at a remote location, or may, perhaps it's even you know some form of pump automation. Those kinds of things would fall outside of the normal scope of the water management services, but certainly things that uh, we're we're capable of. And and then during the hardware installation gene we will we'll provide and install all of the hardware um, de defined during the field assessment and the cost of all of that hardware is included in the uh, in the annual program service fees and we just simply need access to the field uh, by the grower to install the system and you know this question has come up a, a few times as we've talked to people certainly we're not going to go out and install you know, sensors and sites um, randomly, we're gonna work with the grower, again, hand in hand to come to a mutual agreement of where exactly, you know, we wanna put that, that hardware in those sensors to, to make sure that it's as efficient and as effective as, as, as possible. So, so Jeff, we have a question from a viewer here and they're asking, is this uh, something uh, you're offering uh, outside the United States? Is this just in the US, just in California? Where, where, where are you offering this? 
So right now we're offering it uh, in California. Um, I think it's something that we'll be able to expand, you know, really, as I had mentioned in the, in the first uh, webinar, um, you know, this is an introductory period, you know, for us, we want to work with growers. We want to learn. And the best way to do that is, is probably closer um, to home. So I, I would say we'll start, locally in, in California and then uh, expand from there. Yeah. So uh, this is a lot of uh, information. It's a lot of help. Um, I know a lot of people are thinking, uh, what is the cost of this, right? Is this uh, going to be prohibitive? So uh, help us through the costs here. Sure. And it, this is definitely a, a common question as we, we've been talking to folks. So I'm, I'm happy, happy to share it and shed some light on that. The starting point on costs are, are for a basic system uh, that includes everything that's needed to produce a good irrigation schedule and, and, and all of what I just uh, just spoke about. And yeah, but the service can be it can be customized according to a grower's needs, and, and we'll, we're happy to work with growers in that instance. As I mentioned in my the last webinar, we're offering the introductory price uh, for up to 10, 10 growers for the 2021 growing season. And the service fees are based on field sizes. So we've kind of broken this down by field size. And so I can bring a little clarity to that. So less than a hundred acres would be the $48, $40 per acre um, that we talked about in the last web, webinar. Between 101 and 300 acres, it would be $35 an acre, so a little less. And then over 300 acres is uh, would be $30 uh, per acre. And we've, we've had a lot of questions on multiple fields. So as we've talked to some folks and how we would determine the price for multiple fields. And the best way for me to answer that is with an example. If you, if you have two fields and, and one is 80 acres and the other is 100 acres, the proper way to manage the water is to treat these fields separately uh, with two separate systems, reports, schedules, et cetera. So in this case, it would be $40 per acre or $7,200 for the year to cover both, both fields with, with two systems. And it's, so it's just the flat $40 per acre, but they would both be treated at the less than 100 acre price. If you had two 120 acre fields, you'd go over that 100 acre threshold and the price per acre would drop to um, $35 per, per acre level. It's, um, you know, to, to, to kind of expand on that a little bit, there's been a few questions. There are some growers out there that have large fields, say 240 acres or more, and, and the fields are uniform, consistent cropping, et cetera. And in this case, we would plan to put in two systems so to make sure there was sufficient coverage, even in that single field. And, and the price would be the same, the $35 per acre for the up to the 300 acres. And it would drop to um, $30 an acre if the field was larger than 300 acres. But I wanted to, to kind of to point out that when you get to the larger size fields, we do recommend to, to put in, you know, more than one, one system to get a good look. Yeah. What I'm hearing here, Jeff, is that um, it, it's fair, right? There's no catch here. Uh, I think it's a yearly commitment. Is that right? That's right. And, and the thing that I really like about this is that um, it's really a fraction of the value of what's in my field. I mean, look at the almonds behind you and the total value of those almonds. So if I can spend this and get better yields or reduce my labor, uh, it seems like a real bargain to me. Absolutely. What, what, what happens uh, after this introductory period though? Uh, do we have a significant increase or, or what happens at that point? Sure. Yeah, we've had a couple, a couple of astute uh, customers ask that same, that same question. So um, everybody here is and, and they're afraid you're going to jack the prices up uh, after that. So, you know, obviously Jane needs to, to make money, you know, on the service. It's, it's, it's why we're in business. And quite frankly, there will be instances during this introductory period where we will lose money and um, we're prepared for that. 
So we're anticipating the prices after the introductory period um, going to um, $60 an acre for the less than 100. So that's our biggest increase. And it's because the scale is smaller. Just being, again, very transparent on that. It would only go up uh, to 45 an acre for the 101 to 30 acres. And then it would go up to 40, so only a $5 increase for the over 300 acres. So I, I feel like these are pretty modest increases. And, and, and again, frankly, they're just, they're necessary to sustain the, the level of service that we want to provide and that the growers uh, need. Yeah, and what I really appreciate is that you've taken the time to think this out, you know, and say what's gonna happen in the future and how is this work for the grower and for Jane and uh, I really appreciate that you've thought about that and, it, and it's going to work. Um, so our growers, what, what are they gonna gain for uh, contracting these services? Sure, it's a, that's a great question. It's, you know, my, my answer is that um, we would love, love to provide this service over the long term. But the reality is that we will will teach growers how to do this pretty pretty quickly. So the biggest thing they will gain is an accelerated learning curve. You know, avoiding I don't know somewhat painful and, and often costly trial and error frustrations. Yeah. Um, of course, the most the most tangible of that is um, the benefits associated with water and input savings along with you know, crop health monitoring using NDVI. So those are, there's some very tangible things there that um, will, will go directly to the, uh, to the bottom line. And I had a, uh, it's, it's interesting, Richard, I, I had an analogy brought up to me just, just before the holidays, a friend. And so this, some people will relate to this, some, some may not, but I, I thought it was fitting. A friend of mine was looking at buying some new golf clubs so he, he went to the local pro and asked him to do a club fitting. And he kind of got shocked. The pro told him he'd cut way more strokes off his game if he spent the money on lessons instead of new clubs. And he said, he said you could shoot scratch golf with those clubs uh, that you already have um, if you would just change the way you, you swing and, and practice more. So again, kind of the, the, the lesson side of things. So it made me think about the water management services we're offering and how we can help show growers how to irrigate better. No, no one knows our technology uh, or, or how to use it better than we do. Um, the irrigation systems are there. The water is there. There are sharp growers and staff out there we simply wanna help them put it all together in a more consistent and effective way using, I mean, what I believe is the best technology and people available. Yeah, so true. And uh, what a, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was on the search for that magic driver for a lot of years when I was golfing yeah. and <laughs> never found it, right? It's, uh, <laughs> it's how you use it, not, uh, not, the, not the equipment, so. Jeff, there's a lot of growers out there. I mean, we've already seen an overwhelmingly positive response to this, uh, but what do you say to some grower who is out there considering this that right now, they're not sure they're kind of on the fence? Well, I put, put on my sales hat here and, and say, take, take the plunge, uh, take the plunge now. Um, you know, we're only gonna work with, with 10 growers uh, this first year. It's, it's only a one year commitment um, you know, one big question that has come up with, with virtually every grower we've spoken with is what if I want to go on my own after the first year? You know, am I stuck with this? And I, I love that question because it shows they know they can do it on their own and they want, they want to learn. And our answer to that is we'll, we'll give uh, them a partial credit back on what they paid in year one towards buying the equipment. Um, this is really kind of a, it's an ideal outcome and, and we would help that happen um, with a nice, nice credit. And it's, it's interesting because the, the, the next question is always um, after that one is, does that mean I don't get any help after I go on my own? And 
it, I just have to laugh because it's just not the way, um, it's just not the way we are with any customer. Um, you know, we have world-class support that will always be there to help. You know, you, you, you talked about um, Bill Gates. Well, we have Richard Gates. So we got our own Gates, pretty, pretty, pretty sharp guy that's been around a long time. And, and, you know, he's always going to be there to help along with all of our staff. And the only difference would be is you simply would not be getting the weekly reports and the schedules. And the beauty of that would be you wouldn't need them because you'd be creating them yourself and you'd be using the tools, you'd be fully trained and, and self-sustaining in that sense. And for us, that's a, that's a perfect outcome. Yeah, it's always amazing to me, Jeff, to think that um, sometimes when I call customer service, I get one of the founders of the company, Richard yeah. Gates, who's been doing this since the early 2000s. It's right. uh, amazing support that you get. So, well, listen, yeah. Jeff, I, I wanted to say thank you so much for doing this. You know, as somebody who's really concerned about water conservation and takes a lot of pride in California and what we do for water conservation here, um, I feel so much more comfortable and, uh, and I'm very enthusiastic and, and uh, uh, optimistic about what's happening here and what's happening in ag water going forward. I think you've put together an excellent program here and I really appreciate you taking the time to come out and explain it to the viewers. Uh, I think that's great. Uh, for those of you who uh, checked in today, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I thought, um, uh, you know, this is a very busy time of year for everybody coming back from the break. We got a bunch of people in today, and I really appreciate that. If you got some suggestions or things you want to see in the future, feel free to email me or and uh, and let me know. And if you want to learn more about these uh, water management services, email Jeff or, or call him. We'll put his contact information on the email that we send out this afternoon. Again, uh, thank you, Jeff, and uh, thanks to all of you for attending. Uh, we'll be back on Friday at lunchtime, and we've got Kevin Stewart, who's going to be talking about the uh, Almond Conference. You know, the Almond Conference this year was virtual. How did it go? Who participated? For those of you who haven't done a virtual conference, you can learn uh, what goes on and, and how valuable they are. So that's going to be Friday. Of course, all our recordings are on uh, the Jane website, and you can listen to us on uh, Google, Apple, and Spotify podcasts as well. Thanks again, Jeff. Thank you, Richard. Have a great day. Happy. Okay. You too. Yep. All right.